Bolognese with milk. Bolognese, that wonderful, velvety, complex sauce that everybody loves, and it's good for any meal. So what you need is a big pot, a nice dense pot, because this sauce has to cook three, four hours. If you cook it even more, it gets better. The first step is, of course, the pistata, which means the garlic, and the pancetta, in this case, could you use bacon? Of course you could. Cut it in small pieces and give the machine a little help here. All right. And pestata, pestare, means to really chop, and you want it in a paste so it disintegrates into the sauce. So, let's check it out. Okay, yeah, it's a nice pistata. Just a dab of oil, since this certainly has a lot of fat. And scoop it all up. That will slowly begin to break down. Let's get the meat ready. So here we have beef, pork, veal, and sometimes, I'm sure you experience that when you try to make meat sauce, the meat clumps together. To prevent that, you add wine at this point, and you kind of get right in there and break it down so that the wine is absorbed by the meat and it breaks it up a little bit. If you do not have all the three kinds of meat, could you use one or two? Absolutely. Keep in mind that the flavor won't be as complex. Here I have the milk heating. And what's different about the tradizionale, the bolognese in the style of Bologna, they used to put milk into it. So we will make it in the traditional, original style. And what that does is that it really makes it premier, more velvety uh, sauce at the end. So the milk is getting warm. I'm gonna add stock to it. And that is on a low heat because when we add it to the sauce, we want it to be at the same temperature. Okay. This is getting nice and caramelized. Let's put the celery, finely chopped because this will disintegrate. You know, the bolognese is all about that velvety meat that is suspended in this viscous, delicious sauce. And the vegetables play a big part. So it is celery, onions, and carrots. I will add a little bit of the olive oil. Okay. And we'll let that slowly perk away. Now the pancetta has salt, so I'm not putting too much, but I need a little bit for the vegetables themselves. And there's different ways of enjoying bolognese. I mean, certainly the simplest is you pull out uh, a nice a box of rigatoni or ziti, and you dress it with a bolognese, and you have yourself a great meal. We will add the meat to that. Okay, just like that. So here, this will take some time to break down. All the water, the, the water from the meat, needs to evaporate and the meat itself will be nicely caramelized. Just at that moment when it's kind of beginning to stick to the bottom, that's what gives great flavor. So as you see, the meat is releasing the water. And this will take, oh, about a half an hour. So, you know, you do have to have a little patience with this sauce and stay with it, but you know, as I said, this pot will give you many, many great meals uh, for your family and guests. 
So continue mixing. As I said, you know, about a half an hour. You can sort of walk a little bit away from the pot, but stay close to it so it doesn't scorch. I will clean up and we'll be back with the next step of this wonderful technique. Ragu or Bolognese is loved by everybody. And uh, each chef has their own kind of twist on it. A chef, uh, Billy Adbeco, he puts a little bit of cinnamon in his, his, his ragu. Chef Fortunato in at Felidia, he likes to put his vegetables, sometimes a little zucchini, sometimes a little string beans in it. Dan in Kansas City, when in the fall, he puts mushroom in it, and so it gives it a little bit more meat. So it's, you know, it's a great basic sauce everybody loves, and you can make it your own. All right. So as you can see, the water, the meat water, has all dehydrated. It's nice and caramelized, and it's ready for the next building of flavors. And we'll make a hot spot. You know how I like that little hot spot? And I'm gonna add my tomato paste. Tomato paste is high concentration of tomato flavor. And when you don't want all the acidity and the liquidity, of tomato in, a, in its juices or in a can, uh, but you want that intensity of tomato and its sweetness, tomato paste is the ingredient to go to. And let me just caramelize it here because caramelization of tomato paste, for that matter, of uh, spices, gives it, brings it that extra element of flavor. So not too much, it doesn't need to be cooked. Just get it caramelized a little bit, like that. As you can see, it's nice and dry. It's begging for liquid to cook. So here we have a combination of milk and stock, and it's warm. Put just enough of the milk and stock mixture to cover all of the meat. Okay, let me give it a mix. Let's see where we are here. I think a little bit more. As it starts to perk, lower a little bit the flame because now the process is going to be a small kind of bubbly, perkly process of coaxing out all of the flavor of the vegetable, of the meat, and ending up in that luscious bolognese sauce. A little bit of nutmeg. Nutmeg really took hold in Italy, and we use it for the sauce, like this, long cooking techniques. So do not overdo it. It is all set. Lower it. You see it perking. Put a lid on, and back and forth. Don't leave the house, but you can do other things in the house. Come back, mix it, add a little bit of the milk and stock mixture just enough to cover, and let it perk away for at least three hours. Masterclass, Bolognese alla Lidia. The meat is the star of this sauce, with just a small amount of extra ingredients. Always make a pestata so the pancetta or bacon can melt into the sauce. To add depth to the sauce, make sure you brown the meat, render the fat and juices, and cook it until those liquids reduce. Adding milk to the sauce will give it a rounder flavor and a silkier texture. Remember, make an extra batch. Freeze it in pint containers for easy weeknight meals. The bolognese is ready and the rigatonis are cooking. Let me just... Yes, a few more minutes. So rigatoni, you say, well, why did you choose rigatoni? Well, you know, there's more than 370 different shapes of pasta in Italy. And us Italians love to play with the different shapes, different textures, and it makes a difference. Here are the rigatonis that I'm cooking. Now you see the rigatoni have a big hole here and the bolognese sauce will go in there and so it will carry it as you eat it. So that's important and that's my choice for today. Also, I like the ridges. The ridges on pasta gives you a nice tactile sensation. Pene rigate. Pene again, have a little hole. The sauce lodges into the pene 
and the rigate part, I like that again for texture. Farfalle, farfalle is a favorite with children, but adults, we like it as well, because farfalle, it's a pasta that is pinched in the middle, and where it's pinched, that kind of stays more al dente. It has a nice bite when you're dressing it up and eating it ultimately. And of course, the long uh, pastas, the spaghetti, the, the linguine, they go well more with the loose sauces, if you will, linguine clam sauce, spaghetti aglio olio, and those kinds. So, when you're thinking about pasta, first of all, make sure you get a good pasta, 100% uh, semolina pasta, and then play around with the shapes a little bit. The bolognese is ready. Our rigatoni look like they're ready. So I'm gonna put the rigatoni right in there, just like that. Don't rinse the pasta, because if you rinse, you kind of rinse away that little stickiness that is needed. So the sauce adheres to the little stickiness of pasta, the little starch. So don't throw away and rinse away that stickiness. So I'm looking at this. This looks very good. There's enough sauce that it dresses all of the pasta. And I'm kind of letting it cook a little bit. So I'm gonna put a little bit of oil just to finish. This looks good. So I'm gonna shut off the heat and I'm gonna put some grated cheese. My goodness, it looks delicious. Let me just pour myself a plate of pasta. I think after all these three, four hours of mixing, I could use a little plate of rigatoni alla bolognese. And I think I'm gonna put just a little bit of cheese, just like that. That looks darn good. So here is this great pasta dish, and I have a great quote for you. La vita è una combinazione di magia e pasta. Life is a combination of magic and pasta. So, a nice rigatoni with some bolognese. Mm, the aroma is fantastico. It might look unassuming, but it's everything but. Flavors just explode in your mouth. So, worthwhile the effort and the work. So put it on.